Max Verstappen has spent the last four years absolutely demolishing his now ex-teammate Sergio Perez on his way to four Formula One world titles. If someone were to make an ELO rating system for Formula One based off teammate head-to-heads, obviously the most consistent measurement point for a driver, would Max Verstappen now be the highest rated driver of all time? Well, to answer that question, it would require someone to actually make a Formula One ELO system, but what kind of idiot would do something that stupid? So just over a year ago, I released this video where I unveiled my Formula One ELO system. And while that video was not serious and was meant to prove that numerical rating systems are not a good idea for Formula One, it did still resonate with a lot of people. In that video, I showed that either Juan Manuel Fangio or Fernando Alonso were the highest rated drivers of all time. But I also showed that Max Verstappen was the fourth highest rated driver of all time following the 2023 Belgian Grand Prix. I said that if he continued his form of beating Perez every single race, he would be the highest rated driver by the mid-season break 2024. And so, was he? If you just want to hear about Max, you can skip forward to this time. But I thought while we're here, it might be interesting to go through all the other drivers, look at some of the storylines of 2024 playing out in the numbers. Just a reminder on how this works, after each race there's a calculation between teammates only and whoever finishes higher receives rating points from the other according to Mr. Elo's system originally designed for chess. New drivers always enter the sport with a 1000 rating and DNFs still count, so if you DNF but your teammate DNFs before you, you still get points. The Kick Sauber boys started the season pretty close together, and while there was some back and forth, it was Bottas who had a strong run of form through the mid-season to get to a 1070 rating, before Joe started to put in some good performances of his own, and they ended the year pretty close together, on 991 and 981 respectively. Williams obviously had three drivers throughout the year, Alex Albon continued on strong form from 2023, and for lots of this year, he was actually the second highest rated driver, behind, of course, Verstappen. A long run of wins against Sargent and beating Colapinto in their first two races together saw him reach a peak rating of 1, 2, 3, 9, before Colapinto then turned on the Jets and started to take some of that rating away. They finished the year with Albon on 1149, the fifth best rated driver, and Colapinto on 1075. In a bizarre and painful irony at RB, we see that Ricardo actually had a higher rating than Sonoda at the point he was dropped between the Singapore and US Grand Prix. Sonoda did then turn things around against Liam Lawson and finished the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix rated higher, but not high enough apparently to get himself a Red Bull drive. Throwing the Haas guys up shows the crazy divide between Hulkenberg and Magnussen, with Hulk winning every round before Belgium and Kevin dropping down to a 796 rating. Like me, you might look at this and now wonder what the lowest ever rating is in Formula 1. It's this. Sorry, Kevin. He obviously recovered a little bit through the rest of the year, but still, if I show him compared to the rest of the grid, yeah. Alpine starts the season with Ocon on a noticeably higher rating, before Gasly starts to have a strong season and pulls him back. Following his final race for Alpine in Qatar, Ocon was still rated higher, but I think this really highlights one of the main issues with this system in that it just moves too slowly, as Gasly was putting in some much better race results in the second half of the season. Internal team sabotage conspiracies aside, Aston Martin sees Alonso rated significantly lower than his all-time peak from 2014, but I think you won't be surprised to learn that he spent the entire season rated above Stroll. The two Mercedes boys are both right at the top of the grid in terms of ratings and trade places a few times throughout the season, but it is Russell who eventually ends out on top. This isn't surprising. Russell had a very strong season in general, whereas Hamilton finished the year on a bit of a struggle. Without his Belgian disqualification, Russell would have finished the season even higher rated, but he is still second to only Verstappen, and I think I kind of agree. Leclerc and Sainz start the season very evenly rated, but in the second half, Leclerc starts to pull out a convincing margin. Finishing third behind Sainz's second in Abu Dhabi, though, does drop him down enough to finish the year sixth highest rated below Albon. Over at McLaren, it's a bit of a weird one. Due to the large rating gap between Norris and Piastri, whenever Piastri does finish ahead, he has a huge gain of points, 
away from Norris. And so despite finishing behind him with both the Drivers' Championship and the race head-to-head, -head, he actually gains 46 points away from Norris. And then we get on to our 2024 World Drivers' Champion. This graph is entirely not surprising, but we do have this dip for Verstappen when his brakes failed in Australia. Due to the huge ratings gap between Verstappen and Perez, this one DNF means he lost 33 points. This was the only time Max finished behind Perez all year, and from then on he slowly crept his way back up and off the top of the graph. But due to the massive gap between points gained and points lost, this one DNF set him back by nine races. Alonso's record rating was 1412. Could Max beat that? No. Following Abu Dhabi, he's rated 1398, 14 points shy of the record. One thing I didn't consider is due to the huge gap in points, by the end of the season, he's only gaining two points per win. Without the DNF in Australia, I calculate he would have finished the season about two or three points ahead of Fernando Alonso's record rating, but he didn't. This is the graph for the full grid. While it looks about right on first glance, I want to be very clear that this is not a good system. We've got Piastri rated way too low. We've got Hulkenberg rated lower than Jack Doohan. We've got Alex Albon ahead of Charles Leclerc. We love you, Alex, but let's be real here. This system needs some work. I guess if anyone was going to improve on this system, it would make sense if it was me. At this point, I know as much as anyone about Formula 1 scoring systems and driver rating, and I've already got this system. It's not a good system, but it's a system. With some work, maybe it could become a good system. You know what? Over this winter break, I'm going to go off and I'm going to do some tinkering. I'm going to add some more measurement points into this, and I'm going to find a way to objectively score drivers based on more than just teammate head-to-head, -to, -head, to stop teammates flip-flopping, and to make sure a team with two good drivers can both get better. Once we're done, it won't be an ELO system anymore, and so I think it needs a new name, maybe V-Score? The new definitive way to rank drivers from 2025 and beyond. When it's finished, it will go live on this site, and I'll make another little video talking you all through how it works. I know you can't get enough of the numbers. Until then though, enjoy your winter break if you're having one, try not to go too crazy until Formula 1 returns. I've been Mr. V, and I'll see you guys later.